Digital Homicide, as many of you know, was a two-person game development studio run by brothers James and Robert Romain. They made a lot of shitty games, and saying they made these games is being generous, and they got caught red-handed in a series of underhanded activities. They tried to sue self-described D-list YouTuber Jim Sterling for criticizing their games, they tried to sue the planet for criticizing their games, and they made such colossal asses of themselves that they got kicked off Steam and went out of business. I've already made a lengthy video summarizing the history of their utter disaster of a business, but when my last video left off, they still had that lawsuit with Jim Sterling up in the air. So let's dig into the next chapter of this monumental stupidity, shall we? Since they got kicked off of Steam, James and Robert Romine have started a new company called Loot Toot Games, complete with a YouTube account, multiple Twitter accounts, a Facebook page, and yes, an account on Steam. This didn't require much detective work to suss out, by the way. Their Steam and Facebook pages have a shit ton of links to their old homepage, digitalhomicide.ninja, and Lord Crocosquirrel reports they've used the Loot Toot YouTube account to pick fights with other YouTubers. However, before you panic, they are not still creating video games. The Loot Toot Steam account doesn't have any games posted to it, meaning the Romines either can't or just aren't producing any more games on Steam. The Loot Toot Steam account does, however, have an anti-cheating ban, seven other usernames, and abundant evidence to suggest the account started as a fake profile through Digital Homicide to praise their own games and fight detractors anonymously. The comment section is also filled with angry customers because Digital Homicide apparently tried to use the account to push defective keys to their own games. Bottom line, they are still on Steam, but they're not still clogging Steam with new shitty games, so that raises the question, what the hell do they do with their Loot Toot accounts? The Loot Toot Facebook page has a few links still attempting to sell their old digital homicide games, because you can still redeem keys for games after they've been pulled from Steam. So if you absolutely MUST have a copy of The Slaughtering Grounds, then please go get a copy of Batman Arkham City to remind yourself what fun is. Every single post from Loot Toot games across Steam and their social media is either a link to their homepage, digitalhomicide.ninja, or a link to some bundles that they have on g2a.com. Digitalhomicide.ninja is a complete and utter joke. The website is plastered with ads, and I have yet to find a single link on this entire page that actually works. All these buttons you can click for giveaways, yet yeah, none of these buttons do anything except reload the homepage and refresh all of the ads. Their entire website is completely non-functional. It's just a ploy to milk every visitor for as much ad revenue as possible. Rather than actually build something functional to serve their business, they just phoned in a piece of shit with the slightest guise of functionality to to make a quick and easy buck. In other words, their website is exactly like all of their video games. When they're not redirecting people to their useless homepage, Loot Toot does business on G2A, a rather duplicitous site that functions as a used game store for Steam. Vendors on G2A sell the keys to Steam games that have already been purchased, and the Romines sell keys for... Well, pretty much any mainstream game your casual player is guaranteed to have heard of. Dishonored 2, Doom 2016, Rocket League, games like those. Sounds harmless enough, except G2A has something of a reputation. It's come to light that G2A does almost zero background checking on its vendors, users, or products, and the near total lack of oversight has made it a popular site for criminals. Pirates use it to unload stolen game keys, and identity thieves use it to launder money by reselling games purchased with stolen credit cards. I must stress here that there is absolutely zero evidence to suggest that the Romines are up to anything fishy, but with G2A's reputation, the Romines' past history, and no clue how they're getting all these keys and making a profit off of them, well, let's just say nobody's rushing to give them the benefit of the doubt. Shout out to the always helpful Mellow Online on Steam, whose work tracking shit-stained developers is impeccable, and he was able to corroborate pretty much everything that I found regarding Loot Toot Games. But now it's time for the main event, the other digital homicide news now that they're caught up on how they spend their time these days. At the end of my last summary video, I said Digital Homicide had dropped their lawsuit against 100 anonymous Steam users, but their lawsuit against Jim Sterling, with James Romine representing himself, was still ongoing. And I need to make a slight correction to my original video. James Romine is the only one involved in the lawsuit. Robert Romine is ostensibly not involved. In late January 2017, a judge threw out the lawsuit against Jim Sterling on a technicality. James Romine filed the lawsuit as a singular person, and then spent the entire lawsuit bitching about damages inflicted against Digital Homicide, which is a company. The judge ruled that James either had to file as an individual and prove personal damages, or he and his brother had to file as a company. The catch here is that filing as a company requires hiring a lawyer, and no lawyer would touch the case with a 39 and a half foot pole. Everybody thought that this would be the end, a final decisive blow that would end the conflict and finally mark the end of Digital homicide. 
we were wrong. James Romine revised and refiled his lawsuit, with the damages now cranked up to a little over $15 million, though some reports put it over $18 million, reaffirming his full intent to see this lawsuit all the way through. This dumbass who made a ton of unanimously reviled games and nuked his own company by trying to sue his own customers persisted in a lawsuit claiming that a single, not particularly famous internet critic was singularly responsible for all of his problems. Most of the lawsuit was unchanged, but from what I gather from YouTubers Sid Alpha and Leonard French, there are three main additions to the revised lawsuit that are worth mentioning. The first major change was that James Romine apparently just found out that Jim Sterling does voice work for the occasional Steam indie game, and he declared that this makes Jim a direct competitor with motive to shut down Digital Homicide. He argued that Sterling drove Digital Homicide out of business on purpose in order to eliminate competition for his own games and profit off their downfall. This is a fundamental misunderstanding of how everything works. Jim works as a voice actor. Voice actors get paid while a game is in development and don't see a single red cent after the game hits stores. Jim Sterling doesn't give the furry crack of a rat's behind how well his games sell from a financial perspective because he's already been paid every cent he'll ever see off them before they even get released. And even if Jim was making money off of these game sales, James Romine would still need to prove that Jim targeted digital homicide specifically to eliminate them as competition. Steam is a really big place, with thousands of game developers selling tens of thousands of video games to millions of customers with dozens upon dozens of genres, markets, and niches. Does anybody really think that a small, obscure studio peddling crap sack cobbled together asset flip games for 25 cents to a dollar a pop posed any realistic competition to any developer, let alone any of Jim's small handful of voiced games specifically? let alone enough direct competition that Jim would spend months slowly driving them out of business. Romine has a better chance of proving that the center of every black hole is a copy of the Fantastic Four reboot. The second major change to the lawsuit was James Romine claimed that he donated a dollar to Jim Sterling's Patreon page every month, purchased some of Jim's products, and he stressed multiple times that Jim Sterling's games are sold in Arizona. Romine was trying to prove that Jim Sterling does business in Arizona because he was desperate to get the case tried in an Arizona court. Sterling at one point claimed that the Romine stole a preview image from DeviantArt when they'd actually purchased it from Shutterstock. Jim Sterling quickly corrected the article, but Arizona law would still let Romine sue for defamation over the corrected article. This is pretty much the only charge in the entire lawsuit that James Romine has definitive proof to support, setting aside the flimsiness of the charge itself. The entire rest of the lawsuit is a litany of he said, she said defamation charges and claims that Jim harmed them in the most roundabout, impossible to prove ways imaginable. This corrected article is the single minuscule leg supporting this entire farce of a lawsuit, and if the case went to a court outside Arizona, that one leg would get kicked out and the entire case would collapse. The third major change is some unintelligible rambling that nobody really knows what does it mean. You may remember that at one point Digital Homicide created seven or eight fake Steam accounts and uploaded nine games to Steam Greenlight under these fake names. One of their fake accounts was called Micro Strategic Designs. Romine now claims that he and his brother were planning to abandon the Digital Homicide account and move all of their operations over to Micro Strategic Designs, but he then claims they had to abandon this change of account because Jim Sterling reported that the two accounts were run by the same person. Romine not only claimed that Jim Sterling linking the accounts was defamation, which, to clarify, Leonard French pointed out that it's not defamation if it's provably and factually true, but he also claimed that this somehow meant that Jim owed him $2 million in destroyed product. Nobody who's examined the case can figure out exactly what Romine's point is here. My best guess is that Romine was arguing he'd still be in business if Jim hadn't stopped them from switching accounts, but that's speculation. I couldn't swear that's what Romine was trying to say because he never really makes an actual point. Sid Alpha, Leonard French, and Jim's lawyers all agree that none of James Romine's additions address why the case was tossed in the first place. The lawsuit was rejected because Romine filed as a singular person and then listed damages against a company. The bulk of Romine's lawsuit was completely unchanged. He still filed as an individual and then spent the entire lawsuit complaining about harm inflicted to Digital Homicide. He just tried to state that he was the sole proprietor of Digital Homicide LLC, so all of his complaints still apply because he said so shut up. Frankly, the lawsuit probably would have been rejected again for the exact same reason if it had managed to get that far. On February 21st, 2017, almost a year after the lawsuit began, 
News broke that James Romine filed to dismiss the lawsuit with prejudice, meaning the case is effectively dead and he cannot ever file it ever again. In a public statement, Jim revealed that his lawyer met with James Romine on official business and he was able to drill into James Romine's head how deeply and truly screwed beyond all reason he would be if the lawsuit ever made it to court. His lawyer was finally able to convince James Romine that he didn't have a snowball's chance in hell in the dead of summer, and James Romine cut his losses and filed to dismiss. The case is finally and officially dead, and Jim Sterling is in the clear. The February 27th episode of Jim's show, The Jimquisition, went into detail about the case, and I really do recommend watching Jim's video about it. Listening as he goes into all the bizarre details of this disaster is both hilarious and cathartic. I'll cover some of the things that Jim said about the lawsuit, and brace yourself, we are in for some major league epic fail. Romine's initial lawsuit didn't even sum the damages correctly. Dude determined to face seasoned lawyers in court arrived at 2 million plus 4 million plus 5 million equals 10 million. Romine cried libel every time Sterling casually insulted them, claiming it was libel when he compared them to the villains from Home Alone. A few times Jim forgot their names and called them Romino, and Romine claims Jim did that on purpose to tie them to organized crime. Several of the charges Romine brought up were not listed as complaints, meaning the dumb shit wasn't even suing over everything that he was complaining about. Romine claims that Sterling and Valve are business partners and that Jim was responsible for Valve kicking them off steam because that's a far more logical explanation for getting banned from a store than trying to sue 100 paying customers. Romine believes that Operation Clean Light, where Jim tried to spotlight more positive games on Steam, was somehow a covert method of directing criminal harassment against Digital Homicide, a shitty developer with no connection to any of the games mentioned. James Romine has been demanding from the first draft of the lawsuit that Jim should pay him for the time he spent researching law so that he could pursue the lawsuit in the first place. It was clear the entire time that Romine had no idea what in the bat fuck he was doing as he made erratic rapid-fire amendments to the suit and repeatedly tried to do things wildly out of order. At least once in the final version of the lawsuit, James Romine, for no real reason, abruptly starts complaining about the other Steam users that he tried to sue, at times admitting in the document itself that he's complaining about something that wasn't even Jim's fault. Several of Romine's complaints are pure speculation with zero proof. For example, Romine claims that the real ECC games only went after them for using their name under Jim's coercion with absolutely zero zero attempt made to provide evidence as such. Romine's level of emotional distress was apparently listed as equivalent to a parent losing their child. When they were swapping papers to dismiss the lawsuit, James Romine attempted to trick Jim into signing a modified document without informing him that it had been modified. The long and short of it is that Romine believes every single bad thing that's happened to him in the past two years is explicitly Jim's fault. If a bird shit on him, it was because Jim trained it to do so. The big bombshell that Jim released was the prayer of relief in the lawsuit. Apparently, James Romine explicitly said that the lawsuit was meant as punishment to discourage Jim Sterling and any other potential critics from ever talking about them again. The relief package also demanded that Jim Sterling pull down every single article and video ever created about Digital Homicide, make a video apologizing to Digital Homicide, and set up his YouTube channel so that said apology video is first and most prominently featured thing on his homepage for the next five years. So let's get this straight. James Romine not only wanted 10, then 12, then 15 million dollars compensation because a random guy on the internet said that he sucked, but he also wanted that person to be bound by law to apologize to him continuously for the next five years. Thank God this desperate man who tried to weaponize the legal system and assault freedom of speech to get back at somebody he didn't like has failed. Thus ends the long and incredibly stupid tale of Digital Homicide. A game developer that barely developed games, reacted to criticism by trying to ruin the critics' lives, and lashed out at anybody who slighted them until they ran their own business into the ground. And while I'm glad that Jim can rest easy and that these lunatics are down for the count, I also worry about the future. This delusional whack job was able to initiate a lawsuit against somebody he'd never met with next to zero evidence on the flimsiest of pretenses, armed with nothing but a grudge and a fundamental misunderstanding of how law works. He was able to sustain this utter farce of a lawsuit for nearly a year, inflicting significant emotional and financial stress upon his victim. Because remember, even if a lawsuit is obviously frivolous and has zero merit, the defendant still needs to hire a lawyer to fight it and 
lawyers ain't cheap. At the end of the day, didn't James Romine pretty much get away with it? He walked away from the suit empty-handed, he has to pay his own legal fees, and he's a laughing stock across the entire internet, but he was still able to harass Jim for almost a year and force him to dump however much money into legal fees. It scares me that it was so easy for James Romine, someone wholly unqualified that doesn't know the first thing about how lawsuits work, that it was so easy for him to do this, and it scares me that without a more decisive outcome, it won't be long before someone tries again. Especially since we're already seeing signs that digital homicides lessen fell on deaf ears. You'd think that Digital Homicide's DMCA takedown backfiring in spectacular fashion would be a giant red warning sign that issuing copyright strikes just blows up in your face, but it hasn't stopped two recent indie devs from trying that exact thing. It didn't stop YouTuber Dallas Review from issuing illegal DMCA takedowns and copyright strikes against everybody who's been criticizing his new game for fun. Little fun fact about that game, he stiffed most of the people working on it, he outright stole assets and music from Banjo-Kazooie, and he publicly called Banjo-Kazooie Zooey's creators liars when they said that they hadn't given them permission to use their shit. It also didn't stop Dentola Studios from issuing an illegal DMCA takedown on Sid Alpha when he called out that developer for uploading six pre-made Unity games to Steam Greenlight at once. In fact, both of those fuckers have hit Sid Alpha with copyright strikes. You'd also think that Digital Homicide's lawsuit crashing and burning would indicate that suing critics is the mother of all bad ideas, but it hasn't stopped some anonymous scumbucket from threatening Jim again. Jim's Sterling has already been threatened by another developer who claims he's rallying other indie developers to pile multiple lawsuits onto Sterling at once. He plans to get so many lawsuits going against Jim Sterling at the same time that the sheer stress causes his heart to stop. I am not understating any of this. He explicitly said that he plans to put Sterling in the ground. Don't ask who the dev is. He immediately took down the comment and it doesn't look like anybody got a screen cap. Most have taken Digital Homicide's failure as a giant warning announcing what not to do, but other, more desperate people with shit prospects and nothing to lose have interpreted their failure as a challenge to take down Jim where others have failed. One villain has been defeated and it looks like it's only a matter of time before a new one tries to pick up the mantle. It also worries me that the next victim is going to be somebody less able to defend themselves than Jim Starling. So I celebrate the fall of Digital Homicide, but I also ponder their legacy. And I hope that in the future developers will learn the real lessons here. If you try to silence critics, it will blow up in your face. If you try to abuse the legal system, it will blow up in your face. If you make a bad game, you will be called out for it. Deal with it.